Our next little segment here, of course, is going to be about J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance is, of course, the vice presidential candidate for the GOP. If Trump wins, J.D. Vance is going to be our vice president, which is a terrible thought. I admit, I didn't really know much about J.D. Vance before this election. I, not really. He's a senator from a state that I do not live in and will probably never go to, and that's why I don't know much about the man. But from what I found out, what I've seen about him doesn't look good. He is a Christo-fascist lunatic. <laughs> so this is J.D. Vance speaking um, at an event. I think this is from 2021. This is for the Claremont Institute for the American Way of Life, which from what I understand is just like a conservative sort of think tank kind of group. And he is going to talk all about how they need to use government in order to enforce their will on everyone else. So if you haven't had a chance to see who J.D. Vance is specifically and why everybody hates him, stick around and watch this video with me because he lays it all out. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Here we go. <laughs> uh, Arthur, Ryan, how much time do I have? I want to make sure I'm, I'm not keeping anybody too long. Three hours? Okay, great. Uh, so, you know, I, I thought I'd start today by sketching out a vision for how I see what we should be about in the conservative movement in the 21st century, because I think it's useful to anchor ourselves not just in first principles, but in the lives of the people affected by those principles. And then I'll talk about why woke capital, I think, is, is such a problem and what's going on. Uh, I'll try not to be too loquacious and keep you too long, uh, but I care about this topic and I care about now remember when this was happening, this was right smack dab in the middle of the BLM movement. So as this was going on, there were protests all over the country, stuff like that. It was like right after the election had finished and it was starting to kind of wind down a little bit. 2020 was like when there was all the protests and riots and that kind of thing. 2021 starts to wind down a little bit, but it's still going. And the trauma of seeing people out in the streets fighting for what they believe in had really kind of hit the conservative movement in this country really hard. This talk is about the strategy needed to fight back against woke capital. That's that's the name of this speech here. So let's continue on about what we're what we're discussing today. Uh, so if I go a little bit long, I'll ask your your forgiveness in advance. So. You know, my view of what the conservative movement should be about is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. I think that we should fight for the right of every American to live a good life in the country they call their own, to raise a family in dignity on a single middle class job. It's a simple vision that if you work hard and play by the rules, you should be able to live a good life in this country that is your own, that was built by your grandparents and parents, that will be inherited by your children. So first off, right there, you might notice lots of similarities with various white supremacist rhetoric. You should be able to raise a family by a, a country built by your parents and your grandparents. Why do they say that? He's talking to, of course, white people. He's not talking about any, uh, any non-white people, any black people. He's not talking about people of Chinese uh, ancestry who came here in the 19th century or anything like that. You know, he's not talking about black people whose ancestors literally built all of the wealth in the South. He's not talking about that. He's talking about white people because according to him, only white people are American. So you might notice that similarity <laughs> right off the bat there. But the other thing I want to talk about is, you know, he said, oh, you should be able to support a family with one wage. Well, if that's what you want, J.D. Vance, then you should support raising wages. And you notice the one thing conservatives and Republicans never actually do, they never actually support raising actual wages. The reason why people can't raise a family with a one-parent household anymore is not because they don't want to. I'm sure plenty of women out there would love to stay home and stay with the kids. It's because they can't, because you cannot survive nowadays on just one income, If you have, especially if you have a family. If you want to actually have a house and a car and the 2.5 kids and all that, then you need to have multiple incomes. Now, it's, of course, co more complicated in some ways than it, than it sounds. I think that requires that we respect our history 
in order to give that to people, so that people are anchored in the traditions of this country, so that they can teach those, their children those traditions, and so they can pass off a feeling of rootedness in their own community. I'm sure I'm not the only person who's noticing the white supremacist rhetoric here, so that you're rooted, traditions rooted in your community and all that, so you can pass it on to your children, blah, 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 like that. Not very far away from blood and soil. He also didn't mention wages. You want people to stay home and raise kids, raise wages. He didn't mention that. He talked about instead tradition. Why, of course, we worry about the assault on our history in our schools. I think it requires that we give our children and ourselves the right to speak openly and participate meaningfully in this democratic society of ours. That's why we worry so much about censorship, whether it comes from the government or whether it comes from the big corporations. I think that it requires... Why did he say that too? This was shortly after Donald Trump had just been kicked off of Twitter for spreading misinformation about the election in 2021. See, if you remember, Donald Trump was on Twitter all the way up until he tried to pull a coup d'etat. So all of the stupid shit that he said, all the dumb fucking things that he said, all the misinformation he said about vaccines and crap like that, and all the racist things, all of the fights he got in with like celebrities and like other dumb fucking shit he wasted his time on when he was president, instead of actually like, you know, being the president, Twitter let him get away with all of that shit. They only banned him after he tried to take over the country and then was spreading lies about losing the election. And this is what he's talking about here. Oh, censorship, whether it comes from the government or from the private sector, i.e. we should be allowed to spread any kind of ridiculous bullshit we want because we're conservatives and we should be able to prevent anybody else from holding us accountable for our speech. That's what he's talking about here. Moving on. That we live and have work that's has dignity and is meaningful. That's why we worry about our trade and economic policy, so that the people who do work hard and play by the rules actually have good jobs there to employ them. Okay. That's why we worry about our foreign policy, so that we don't send people to wars that have no connection to our national interest and end up depleting our country of its most useful resource, the young men and women who fight for our military. Please don't fall for that bullshit either. Conservatives and Republicans do not give a fuck about war. They are the only ones who actually start wars. <laughs> okay, keep that in mind. We have not had a war started by a Democratic administration in this country in the last 50, 60 years. It is not, there has not been a war that has started by a Democrat in this country since before Vietnam. Like, I'm not even kidding. Go look them up. Go look up every war. Go look up every police action that we've had. Things like that are not even considered wars. Things like Grenada and like Panama, that kind of thing. Every single one of those has been started by a Republican conservative. Every single one, the Gulf War, Afghanistan, fucking the drone war, everything. All that shit has been started by conservatives. And yeah, maybe the Democrats haven't ended them like we would like them to. They've definitely continued on the policy, but do they start it? No, they do not. And you know, the only person who's actually ended wars in the last 50 years has been Democrats. Joe Biden has put an end to the fucking drone war. He pulled us out of Afghanistan. It's like, no, did Donald Trump do that shit? No. Okay, so don't fall for that fucking bullshit. It's because, you know why? It's because the Democratic Party supports sending money to Ukraine. And that really drives the Republicans crazy because they're all like fucking Putin stands and shit. So don't fall for that shit. Moving on. All of these things, all of the battles that we fight, as complicated as they are, affect and implicate this question of whether we're enabling the people, the citizens of this country to live a good life in their own, in their own nation. Now, I happen to believe that the biggest obstacle to this, the biggest obstacle to accomplishing this vision is woke capital, which of course is the topic of conversation today. And I believe that those of us on the right need to wake up to what's really going on because in practice, we have lost, and I hate to sound cynical, I think I'm just being realistic, we have lost nearly every institution in this country that actually matters. We've lost the academy, we have lost the media, we have now- Yeah, bullshit, by the way, conservatives have not lost the media <laughs> at all. If anything, the media is overcautious 
and overrepresentative of conservatives. Secondly, there is no such fucking thing as woke capital. There's no businesses out there. There's no banks that are providing capital just to spread things like social justice and all that. That's bullshit. That's complete bullshit. What he really means by this is that a company that won't advertise if you allow hate speech, for example. That's what he's fucking talking about. That's what they mean by woke capital, where you get held accountable for being a racist or for spreading, say, homophobia or transphobia or Islamophobia, that kind of thing. That's the kind of fucking shit they're talking about here. If you have a company that actually has DEI programs or that kind of thing, right? That's what they fucking mean by woke capital. There is no, like, woke fucking corporation. Corporations are interested in making money. Has nothing to do with quote-unquote wokeism. That's fucking bullshit. It's a complete fucking lie. Moving on. Now lost the government. And we've lost the business and financial institutions too. That's what woke capital is really about. If we're trying to define this term and understand what it means, it's rooted in the fact that the biggest businesses, the most powerful institutions, the most powerful banks in this country have aligned themselves against us. Now that is an obvious fact. You see it in a number of ways. A couple of years ago, uh, one of my, my most frustrating, one of the, the things I've been it's most frustrated about in American politics is when Stacey Abrams said about a Georgia restriction, abortion restriction a couple of years ago that this was a bad bill because it was bad for business. That was the argument of our new corporate neoliberal class. And she was right. And this is something those of us on the right have to accept, is that when the big corporations come against you for passing abortion restrictions, when corporations are so desperate for cheap labor that they don't want people to parent children, she's right to say that abortion restrictions are bad for business. And what that means... Now, I would like for you to take a look at what he just said and how he just framed it. So this is what it was, okay? A few years back, Stacey Abrams, I believe she was the senator, I think, in Georgia. And this is right around that time. I think she's not anymore. I could be wrong about that. I don't think so. But anyway, so what is this all about, right? Well, they tried to basically ban abortion in Georgia. And she did say this. She said, yeah, that's bad for business. And why is it bad for business? Because people would boycott Georgia, <laughs> right? That's what it was. Now, see how he framed it, right? See how he framed it. He said uh, when a, a corporation is so hard up for labor and it's like, no, it has nothing to do like a, a corporation that is expressing solidarity with a woman's right to choose has nothing to do with labor at all that's absolute bullshit it has to do with their pr why would a corporation have a stance on abortion at all why would that matter let's say you have a soda company like let's say you work for pepsi cola right what benefit is it to you as the owner of pepsi cola to take a stance on abortion one way or the other it doesn't benefit you at all. How does that affect you? Fetuses don't buy soda. So why should you give a shit if abortion is legal or not legal in the state where you're headquartered? The only reason why you would care is because you have seen where the polls are at and the polls say people like it when you support abortion rights. And that's the literal only reason. Unless you have some kind of religious reason why you support it one way or the other. That's literally it. It's either your religion or you're just trying to get some good PR. So it has nothing to fucking do with some nefarious plan in order to like get rid of all the domestic labor so that they have to import, import labor from other countries. Which is what he is alluding to, by the way. That's what J.D. Vance is saying. He's basically... You know, read between the lines. That's what he's doing. He's he's spouting great replacement bullshit here. That's another talking point from the Nazi types that uh, the Jewish overlords or whatnot are encouraging women to get abortions so that we have to import our labor from south of the border. And then that way, Democrats win the election. I'm not even kidding. That's I wish that was like some something that I just made up. It's not. That's the conspiracy theory. People that vote for J.D. Vance, like, actually believe that shit. <laughs> and you see how casually he just dropped it into the conversation. And if you didn't know this, you wouldn't have any idea what the hell he was referring to. Just want to kind of point all that out here. 
This man is not just a normal politician. This guy is a fucking deranged ideologue. ...means for those of us who want to protect the dignity of the unborn is that we should be for abortion restrictions, even if they are bad for business. We should support the dignity of human life, even if it means the corporate class doesn't like it. That is a simple and unavoidable fact of the era that we find ourselves in. But I think no moment illustrated what woke capital meant for our country. Please kind of remember also, by the way, that they don't actually care about children, right? The dignity of the unborn. He doesn't give a fuck about anybody's dignity, especially kids who are not his. He doesn't give a fuck about them at all. He will force a woman to have a child and then turn around and get rid of all of the social safety net that helps that woman raise that child. Yes, he will. He will do it. That's what it says in fucking Project 2025. <laughs> So don't fall for that shit for a second, right? Conservatives do not care one way or the other. They don't have two shits to give about the actual welfare of anybody's child. Then the riots last summer tied to the Black Lives Matter or BLM movement. Now, we all know the ideology that underpins this movement. We all know what happened. In Minneapolis alone, I believe $13 billion of damage were caused, was caused by the riots set off by the Black Lives Matter movement. Woke capital is when the companies and businesses are more invested in a movement like BLM than traditional American principles, and they are. And importantly, if you peel back the onion, what you often find is that the businesses that are most connected and most devoted to destroying our values are also benefiting financially from it. Let me give you just a couple of examples. All right. Here you're going to see like a very deranged conspiracy theory <laughs> that has no basis in fucking reality. So keep in mind what he just said, right? Keep in mind what he just said. He just defined woke capital as a company that benefits more from promoting wokeism or whatever than traditional American values, right? When he means, when he says traditional American values, he basically means Christianity, Right. Conservatism and Christianity. That's what he means. And now he's about to give examples of corporations who benefit from wokeism. Hang on to your hats because this is going to get crazy. The insurance companies in Minneapolis who saw billions of wealth, black and white, destroyed by those riots, have consistently underpaid the premiums to the owners of those businesses who had their livelihoods destroyed. In one example, a guy had to pay $140,000 to have the rubble from the business that he built carted off by the city of Minneapolis and his insurance company reimbursed him to the tune of about $40,000. That's just one example that I read. Now, who was one of the biggest funders of the Black Lives Matter movement? So he used insurance. Now, I'm sure any of you out there who have ever tried to collect anything from insurance can testify to the fact of how ridiculously difficult it is to actually get a payout. See, the entire point of the insurance industry is take as much money as you can in premiums and not pay anything out in return on claims. That's what insurance is all about. That's how insurance people make money. That's why it's impossible to get, say, fire insurance in a high-risk area. That's why lots of insurance companies in Southern California don't even offer earthquake insurance. That was a thing. They actually had to pass a law saying, hey, you must offer earthquake insurance in California. After 1994, there was a big earthquake and a lot of the insurance companies just stopped offering it. And it was like the state had to step in and be like, no, you will offer earthquake insurance. Stuff like that. So how the fuck is that any different than any other place where insurance has worked ever? You know, even your car. Go get in a car accident. See what happens when you try to collect on your insurance. Is it easy just go in and submit a claim, get your money? No. No, because that's the entire point of insurance is to take all the money they can and not give you any back, right? I mean, and it's like that with all the insurance, home insurance, fire insurance, earthquake insurance, car insurance, health insurance. That was a big problem too. That was part of the ACA. They had to pass a law basically saying, hey, your insurance has to pay out because it used to be your insurance would use every opportunity they could to just not pay out. And you'd be paying your health insurance for years and years and years and years. And then the minute you fucking needed it, they would just drop you saying, oh, you actually have a claim? Fuck off. So no, there's no woke fucking company benefiting from BLM riots or whatever. 
There's no woke insurance company like sitting there cleaning up and then no, no, that's just called insurance. And here's the thing about it. It's like the way he says it makes it sound like it's insidious, right? And it is insidious, but all insurance is like that. There's no conspiracy from woke insurance companies to benefit from like BLM riots. It's complete total fucking bullshit. But, you know, conservatives eat shit like this up because they get to justify their racism. The insurance companies, they avoided the criticism that they weren't paying their own clients for their own damaged property, while at the same time, they were making that damage more likely by funding the movement that was causing it. And increasingly, if you look at the details, if you peel back the onion, this is happening. The best example, of course, is Jeff Bezos, one of the largest funders of the Black Lives Matter movement in this country, to the tune of millions of dollars. Now, who benefits most when small businesses on Main Street are destroyed? Who wants to see their competitors unable to deliver goods and services to people so that you get it delivered in your brown Amazon box? Jeff Bezos, there is a direct connection between woke capital and the plunder that's happening in our society today. The people who are invested in destroying America via our corporate class are also getting rich from it. This is an important piece of the puzzle to understand. So did you catch that? Did you catch that? So according to J.D. Vance, Jeff Bezos and Amazon.com funded BLM so that they would purposely go out and destroy all of the small businesses in this country through riots and stuff and whatnot. So that way people would be forced to buy more stuff on Amazon. Did I misunderstand that? That kind of sounds like what he said to me. Did I get that wrong? Am I mischaracterizing what the man just said? It just came out of his mouth, didn't it? That's the conspiracy. So this is all BLM and all of the civil unrest that we had in 2019 and 2020 that was all jeff bezos's fault folks the whole thing all jeff bezos's fault he instituted all of that you know what he probably got george floyd killed on purpose just so specifically so they'll go out and burn down all the different cities or whatnot and that way your local mom and pop a convenience store gets crushed and now you have to like order your twinkies and shit through amazon right see how fast conspiracy theories like this evolve i guarantee you and within 10 minutes i could pull up a dozen websites and a dozen forums and a dozen social media posts that are echoing this exact same shit and here's the thing jd vance does he look like a crazy person does he look like a gibbering Alex Jones type who's sitting there screaming about how the um, chemicals are turning the frogs gay and stuff like that no. No, he doesn't. This man could possibly be our vice president. Very, very creepy stuff. Very weird stuff, eh, folks? Now, why is this happening? I think this is a really important question. I know that we have had some, some very good conversations today about what's driving it and what's going on. But I want to offer three suggestions for what's driving woke capital. I'll try to be brief here. The first is the rise of the digital over the real economy. If you look at the companies that are most woke, that are most aggressively anti-American and anti-conservative, they are the companies that operate in the digital as opposed to the real economy. If you're manufacturing something, okay. if you depend on cheap energy, if you're building something with your hands or employing those who do, if you're shipping goods from one part of the country to another, you are fundamentally less woke than the digital technology oligarchy that's trying to destroy the country. You see this consistently. Now, sometimes, of course, those that's companies bullshit, can be woke too, okay. and sometimes there are some digital technology entrepreneurs who are not woke. But by and large, the digitalization of the American economy is one of the biggest drivers to the American corporate class becoming woke. It's consistent, you see it everywhere, uh, and it's a big problem. What is he referring to, by the way? He's referring to social media companies. That's what he's referring to. Why is that? Because more people use the online companies for their daily commerce. More people use Amazon. More people use Facebook. And at this time, Twitter. This was back when Twitter was still Twitter and not X. And all of the Nazis and shit were still banned off of Twitter. <laughs> right? And Donald Trump was still banned and all that. This is before... Elon Musk bought it and let all the white supremacists back on, that kind of thing. Where you actually have more people using a product, then that product tends to enforce its safety regulations when it comes to things like racism and threats and cyberbullying and whatnot. Because that's what he's really referring to here when he says woke. These companies are woke and blah, 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 and they're censoring us. 
What he's really referring to is the ability for him and his friends in order to be racist and to dox people that they don't like, dox gay people, that kind of thing, and to threaten people for being gay and being trans and that kind of stuff like that. That's what he's really referring to. So when he says like, oh, if you actually build something, you're conservative. That first off, that's bullshit. It's complete bullshit. It has nothing to do with that. You're more likely to be conservative depending on the area of the country you live in, not the type of work you do. Yeah, it's not like everyone who's a trucker is a redneck, <laughs> right? Everyone who's a trucker, everyone who's a fucking lumberjack is like a super conservative redneck and, and hates trans people and hates gay people. No, that's not true at all. It's much more dependent on what part of the country you live in. And you were, more importantly, what part of the country you grew up in, where you were raised in. That seems to determine your outlook when it comes to race and gender equality and that kind of thing. Yeah, he's 100% wrong on that. A second suggestion or a second thing that's driving this is the rise of globalization. So the companies that are most invested in the American nation state, in the people who live here, in the laborers that build and make our goods, those people tend to be far less woke than the people who are employed who are employing people overseas who are more invested and more, con uh, excuse me, more committed to overseas regimes. You see that? You catch that, folks? So if you're less woke, you're more of a real American. You're more invested in the United States. So if you're woke, you're a globalist. You're controlled by the globalist cabal of industrialist Jews or whatever. It's the same shit. That's what I'm trying to get at here. The same thing that he's saying here, it's the same shit that you hear from people like Nick Fuentes and fucking every single like racist piece of shit you see on Twitter and 4chan. It's the exact same stuff. He's he's basically repeating the greatest hits of white supremacy right here. I just want to point that out because this is mainstream conservatism. You know, running being the vice presidential candidate for the GOP, for the Republican Party, that you can't get more mainstream conservative than that. So if you think that this stuff is like fringe, if you just think that all the racists and the weirdos or whatever are just part of some weird fringe, it's just some crazy guy on Twitter with a name like fucking cat shit or something like that. No, no, this is the fucking possibly the future vice president of the United States spreading this shit. That's why these ideas are dangerous, especially when you get somebody like this who can cloak it in non-dangerous sounding language. Now, I've heard of a banker who was asked by a union leader, don't you worry about all the projects that you're funding that are causing the destruction of American jobs. You're shipping jobs overseas, you're funding the Chinese regime, you're making it easier for the Chinese middle class to rise and harder for the middle class of your own country. And the banker's response was telling, and I think we should take it to heart. He said, I have international shareholders. I have international customers, I have international investors, and I have international clients. I am not an American company. Why do I care about America more than anyone else? Yeah, first off, that conversation never happened. <laughs> There's never a conversation where you just said that's bullshit. Secondly, Republicans in particular don't really seem to give much of a shit about keeping jobs in the United States. No, they don't. They talk a bunch of shit about that. But when the rubber hits the road, they don't actually enact any policies to try to stop that. What did Donald Trump do? Oh, he enacted a bunch of tariffs. Did that stop fucking sending jobs overseas? No. No, no, he didn't. He did a bunch of stuff that looked like he was trying to do something. If I remember, there was a couple of instances where he took a personal interest in trying to stop some companies from shipping overseas, giving them tax breaks and shit like that. And then those companies just took the money and then went overseas anyway. Joe Biden has actually increased domestic job growth when it comes to manufacturing and stuff like that. But he's a Democrat, so, you know, fuck him. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's bullshit. I just want to point that out, that what he's saying here is bullshit. It's like two-faced bullshit. He doesn't actually care about protecting American jobs. It's more important for him that the corporations make money. Keep that in mind. Republicans are the biggest globalists of all. Moving on. That attitude is driving a lot of the woke corporate class. Because when you're invested in American workers, when you depend on American customers, when American consumers have more power over you than the Chinese regime, if your laborers are people 
in my hometown of Middletown, Ohio, and not Chinese slaves over in China, then you are fundamentally more attached to the American nation state. You can't criticize it in the same way, and you face different incentives. So the Did you catch that? You can't criticize it in the same way. See? Because what's it really about? Is it really about the workers? Or is it really about control? Why can't a company that is invested, quote unquote, invested in the United States, criticize the American government in the same way that a corporation that isn't? What, I thought one of our founding like principles of this country was the ability of someone to speak freely, speak their mind when it comes to criticizing anything, especially the government. So where did this like not criticizing the government shit come from? Because that's what he's really talking about. That's what they're really interested in. They're not actually interested in making anybody's lives easier. So that's the thing you got to remember when it comes to conservatives and conservatism. They're not interested in actually solving problems. They're interested in sweeping problems under the rug, turning things back the way they were 50 60 years ago that's all of this anti-woke shit that's all it really is he's just interested in returning things to how they were back into the 1950s where black people and women and minorities oh you could get a job for way less than what a white person made and if you spoke up you got fired and there was nothing you could do about it that's what they really fucking want po the fake fucking populism i think is especially egregious with J.D. Vance. Moving on. Rise of globalization, the rise of a new corporate class that's more invested in regimes overseas than in their own country is another big driver of woke capital. And the final thing I'd point to is that the capital allocators themselves are going woke. This is the third and maybe the most important point that I'll make. All across our country, we have nonprofits, big foundations that are effectively social justice hedge funds. The Ford Foundation has $14 billion in assets under management. Their leadership is serving on many of our corporate boards. And of course, the corporate boards of some of our biggest companies okay. are serving as the leadership of the Ford Foundation. The biggest projects that they're investing in are critical race theory. They're investing in the racial division all across our country. They're invested in all of the progressive social causes of the moment. One of the biggest investors to the Black Lives Matter movement that destroyed many of our towns and cities last summer. That's bullshit, by the way. That's complete bullshit. As I actually looked into this, as far as I could tell, the Black Lives Matter movement only had somewhere around, like it was like less than $200 million. Now, what is he actually talking about? Well, let me take a look. I got, we're gonna do a quick diversion here. And I'm gonna show you guys what J.D. Vance is referring to. This is a Newsweek article. Americans deserve to know who funded BLM riots. This is an opinion by the Claremont Institute Center for the American Way of Life. If you remember, that is actually who J.D. Vance is giving the speech to. And in this piece here, they go on to say that they've gone and they've created this database to track corporate contributions and pledges to the Black Lives Matter movement and related causes. You see that? And related causes, right? Well, here is the actual database that they created and i'll put links down to all this shit below let's go ahead and move this over here this is the claremont institute for the american way of life and this is their database here's their database and you can see here total to blm movement and related causes they say it's so far 99 million dollars or something like that but if you look it actually, here's all the contributors, and it's like, oh, that looks like a lot of contributors. Oh, I see things like Apple in here. I see Atlantic Records. I see AT&T. I see Ben & Jerry's, etc. But if you open one of these, Ben & Jerry's, for example, it says it's a Black Lives Matter thing. But if you look here, all of the money that they contribute doesn't actually go to Black Lives Matter. They've basically tracked any time any corporation has spent any money on anything that has to do with inclusivity or equality at all. Let's just read the Ben and Jerry's one, right? Has contributed to, partnered with, or promoted organizations including the NAACP, Color of Change, Advancement Project, ACLU, Power Youth Center for Social Change, Close the Workhouse Coalition, Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, the Human Rights Campaign, 
the National Center for Transgender Equality, AVAS, the Climate Reality Project, 350.org, and BICEP, right? None of these are actually Black Lives Matter. So they're taking everything, not just Black Lives Matter, but related causes, everything that has to do with any kind of charity or movement or nonprofit or anything that has to do with anything that relates to equality, not between just black people and races. You saw in here too, they also did like, for example, National Center for Transgender Equality. All of that shit's being lumped together. And they're claiming that all oh, these corporations are funding BLM and they went and burned down the cities. It's like, no, that's not true at all. It's like they're basically taking any time any corporation gave money to anyone who tried to promote equality and claiming that it went to BLM so that they can burn down our cities or something like that. It's fear-mongering bullshit is what it is. I'll put this down in the thing and you can actually see here, you know, like some of these, like this is uh, Bath and Body Works. Look at this. One million to the National Urban League and the YMCA including contributions to YMCA's Your Voice, Your Vote, Your Future initiative. Like, so because they gave money to the YMCA who used it to help people, to register people to vote, that means they're somehow supporting BLM and responsible for burning down all of our cities in 2021. It's such, it's, it's complete and total fucking horseshit is what it is. Let's go back to J.D. Vance, though. Now, if I want to sell my house or if a middle-class American wants to sell their house and they make, say, $200,000 on the sale, they have to pay tax on that $200,000 of money that they made. But if the Ford Foundation sells Not $200 always. million dollars of real property in an investment transaction, they pay zero tax because our public policy has enriched and prioritized the foundations and the nonprofits that are destroying our country. Now, why does this matter? So corporations also would not pay any tax on that either? You notice that he doesn't say anything about that. You notice he, him or his anybody in the Republican Party never say anything about corporations not paying any money. So just remember that it's it's not, you know, when he says that, oh, they don't pay any taxes. He doesn't actually give a fuck about that either. If it was up to him, corporations would pay zero taxes and all of the taxes would come from the middle class, which he just thankfully is not a part of anymore. Keep that in mind, too. The populism is phony. Everything that he's saying is designed to make people angry so that they go, yeah, and they want to rise up and vote against their own best interests. That's what he's doing right here. Matter. This matters because if you're in my business, I work in venture capital. If you work in private equity, if you're a hedge fund manager, yep. or if you're just a business that needs money to operate. He works in venture capital. Yeah, he really gives a shit about taxes getting paid, huh? <laughs> you really care about taxes getting paid? What about the corporation that you work for, J.D. Vance? How much did they pay in fucking taxes last year? You fucking liar. Operate your business. You have to go to these people to get the capital to do what you need to do. No, and of don't. course, the biggest capital allocator, or at least one of the biggest capital allocators in the world, is that woke social justice hedge fund known as Harvard University, which has over 100 First off, that's bullshit. No, you don't have to go to anybody to get your capital. Do you, J.D. Vance? You know, you say you work in venture capitalism. Do you get your money from these people? Or do you get them from other sources of capital that don't give a fuck about gender inclusivity? Just remember, this is total fucking bullshit, what he's saying here. This has no basis in fucking reality. And he knows, just like anybody else here, that all of those corporations that I just listed in that report giving any money to any charity whatsoever, it's all done for PR reasons. None of those companies give a fuck about anybody's rights. See, that's the thing you got to remember. You know, you see Disney and oh, Disney donated some money to whatever charity, charity, blah, blah, blah. And then they put some uh, they put some non-white characters in their latest Marvel movie. Do they really give a fuck? All right, are they really doing this to make the world a better place? No, they're doing it to make money, all right? Corporations are not in business to promote values. They're in business to make money. If they could do it without doing anything, without providing any services or any goods or anything whatsoever, that's what they would do, okay? So don't give me this shit. It's like, oh, you have to go to them to get your car. No, you don't. 
It's fear-mongering bullshit. Moving on. $120 billion under management, which funds some of the most destructive ideologies all across our country, which literally trains the next generation of priests in the woke seminary that's dominating <laughs> our professional class. That university's endowment pays not a dollar of tax. It has no obligation to draw down the principal. It is literally ammunition for the left. And yeah, okay. we, through our public policy, have given that endowment more power. That's bullshit. Now, this raises the question, of course, what do we do about this? And I don't mean this to be exhaustive. I can't possibly sketch out everything that we have to do on the question of woke capital. But I think there are some obvious solutions, and it should start from a fundamental premise that if you are fighting the American nation state, if you are fighting the values and virtues that make this country great, the conservative movement should be about nothing if not reducing your power and, if necessary, destroying you. Now we're getting into the, uh, the meat of the argument. First off, who the fuck are you to say what American values should be? Say, it's not actually what American values are or what they should be. It's what they say they should be. Keep that in mind too, folks, right? What I think American values are, what you think American values are, don't fucking matter. It's what J.D. Vance and his cohort of criminal fucking banker friends thinks that American values should be. And now he's going to outline for us why the government should be the ones that get to determine who w who wins and who loses in our society according to the values that they think are American values. Moving on. We cannot let the people who are driving this country into the ground continue to benefit from special privileges, from tax breaks, from subsidies, and from liability protections. That is the simple rule that we should follow. 120 billion... Yeah, and remember that, by the way, that means cutting all the taxes for his corporation that he works for and raising it for all of these other groups that he disagrees with. That's what he's really talking about. Because you could say, you know, what would be the solution to that, right? Okay, yeah, you guys aren't paying your taxes, whatever. What would be the solution to that? Raise taxes for everybody equally. If you're a corporation, raise the fucking taxes. No, 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 no. He doesn't want that. No, 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 no. What is he actually proposing here? He's proposing raising taxes depending on the values that your nonprofit or whatever or whatnot actually espouses. And who's going to judge what those values are? Who, who are the people that get to say, okay, you are a corporation that is invested in the American uh, nation state, like to use his, the language that he uses, and you are one that isn't, so we're going to raise your taxes. Who are the people that get to decide that? Why, of course, it's J.D. Vance and his Christo-fascist friends. That's what he's talking about. What he's talking about is fascism, where the government gets to decide based on ideological grounds who is and who isn't going to actually have advantages. Who's going to pay taxes and who doesn't? Who gets regulated and who doesn't? Based on their ideology. That's fascism. Billion dollars of Harvard University endowment is ammunition for our enemies. And we can't let the enemy have that much ammunition or we're going to lose. It's that simple. This principle should guide all of our policy response. If you cannot go after the pocketbook of these people, if you cannot make them pay, then you are accepting defeat. It's that simple. We're never going to beat them unless we go after them. A few ideas on this front. The first is that we should eliminate all of the special privileges that exist for our nonprofit and foundation class. Why is it that if you're spending all your money to teach literal racism to our children and their schools, why do we give you special tax breaks instead of taxing you more? If we're Literal racism. What is the literal racism that he's talking about? It's teaching that all kids are equal. That if you're white, that if you're black, you're fine. You're good who you are. How you were born is good. That's what it is. That's what he's considering racism. Teaching kids that, you know, to look past skin color. And also teaching kids the history of racism in this country. Teaching them about things like slavery and Jim Crow, the civil rights movement, and all of the people that sacrificed in the years before them. It's important stuff. These are all things that they want to remove. That's what he considers racism, by the way. Just keep that in mind. We're serious about fighting this problem. Why do we give the companies, and by the way, the foundations are used by liberal donors as tax havens for themselves. When Biden raises taxes, 
They won't pay the brunt of this. They'll give all that money to the foundation. The foundation will use it to pr push their progressive agenda. They'll be saved from the consequences of the tax increase, even as it will empower institutions that hate us. We need to stop. Did Biden raise taxes, by the way? No. More fear-mongering bullshit. Biden did not raise taxes on corporations. He hasn't been able to, thanks to the conservative control of the House. It would have been nice if he did. <laughs> but, you know, just want to kind of throw that in there, too. It's just more uh, fear-mongering bullshit that uh, has no basis in fucking reality. Stop that. The decision to give those foundations and those organizations special privileges is a decision made by public policy. It was made by man, and we can undo it. We just need better public policy and a willingness to actually go after them. We need to reorient our entire economy towards the real economy and not the digital economy. It is striking how much the digital economy dominates in our public policy. To give you just one basic example, there's a high quality manufacturer in central Ohio that makes natural gas compressors. Their corporate tax rate, like everyone else's, is 21%. Ask them what their effective tax rate is, and they'll tell you, it's 21%. The reason is because they can't hide their assets. They can't pretend that their assets exist somewhere else. They're making things in the state of Ohio, employing good Americans in good American jobs to do it. Okay, so let's just keep track of what he just said. A corporation in Ohio is paying 21% taxes, which is the law. And he said it's because they can't hide their assets. Okay, moving on. Ask Google or Apple or Facebook what their effective tax rate is, and it's somewhere between 0 and 10% because they can pretend that their digital assets are located overseas. So our very tax code biases the companies that are most invested in the American nation state. That has to stop. Now, he's right there that the tax code is written in such a way that super giant mega corporations like Google, like Microsoft, like General Electric, like defense contractors, that those types of corporations pay very little tax. He is correct. So what's his solution here? Is his solution closing those tax loopholes so that everybody actually pays the 21% that they're supposed to pay? Or is his solution getting rid of all of the corporate taxes whatsoever, like every other Republican piece of shit wants to? Keep in mind that J.D. Vance's entire career has been bankrolled by a billionaire, Peter Thiel. Everything about this guy is because a billionaire gave it to him. The only reason why he's even in the running for vice president. The only reason why he could potentially be the president of the United States one day. That is, if Donald Trump gets elected and then, like, dies of a heart attack or something because he's fucking, like, 79 years old, right? This you We could be looking right now at the next president of the United States. Keep that in mind, okay? The only reason why he's in that position is because he has rich benefactors. Do you think for a nanosecond he's going to raise taxes? Or he's going to allow a tax hike on corporations of any kind. You're fooling yourself. This guy is completely full of shit. We should have a different preference and a different goal. Go after the companies that are destroying this country. Reward the companies that are building it. It's that simple. That's what public policy is about. And if we're unwilling to use those levers, we should get out of this business altogether. The globalization point has been beaten to death. In but like I said, okay, that's nifty. But who gets to decide which ones are deserving of the special treatment? Who gets to decide what corporations are the ones that are quote-unquote American and are spreading American values? Who gets to decide which corporations are not the enemy, like he keeps saying? He does. That's what he's saying. He's saying we need to use the government in order to crush people that we don't agree with in order to destroy the livelihoods, in order to tax corporations into oblivion, the ones, you know, as long as they're not supporting the values that we value. That's what he's saying right now. Am I wrong here? Am I reading this wrong? Am I misinterpreting it? Let me know. Because that's what it kind of fucking sounds like to me. Last five years, but I'll beat it to death a little bit more because I think it's important. Recall that banker and what he said about his international customers, shareholders, and employees. We should take that person at face value. Yeah, that conversation never If that person happened, doesn't believe way. that he's an American institution or part of an American institution, we should treat him like that. 
If you are more invested in regimes that hate this country, if you're more invested in workers in slave camps in China than the people in my hometown, no more tax breaks, no more tax cuts. We should be raising their taxes if they're shipping American jobs overseas, not cutting them. That's how you fight them. That's how you fight them at the pocketbook. And that's how you make them pay. It's that. Yeah, I actually agree with that. I definitely agree with that. If you're a corporation and you're sending jobs overseas, you should have to pay taxes. Will the Republican Party ever do that? Have they have they ever actually done that? No. If J.D. Vance were president, would he sign a law to that effect? Of course he fucking would. This is all show. This is all pot like fake bullshit populism. And you can tell because he isn't saying shit like this now. He's out there right now traveling the country and canvassing and trying to get people to vote for him to be president. Is he saying shit like this now? Oh, we should raise uh, corporate rates on corporations? Fuck no. Fuck no, he's not saying that. He's like spreading bullshit about like fucking transgender bathrooms and shit like that. That's what J.D. Vance is talking about. He's talking about the woke mob and all this other ridiculous fucking horse shit. And like awkwardly buying donuts for people who could give a fuck who like he actually is. You guys see that video? He's like, I'm running for vice president. And the person behind the counter is like, okay, you gonna order some donuts or what? Like, <laughs> he's so full of shit. There's only a few minutes left, so let's continue simple globalization was a choice it was a choice that we made to make it cheaper to hire chinese slaves than american workers it's not cheaper for our country it's not cheaper for the people suffering from heroin yeah that was a choice made by conservatives by the way made by conservatives along with neolibs like bill clinton you know i'm not gonna like say that there were no like democrats involved in that but overall yeah that was a choice made by the conservative ruling class 40 years ago in order to sell out, sell out the American worker so that they can make a buck. Just don't pretend like you fucking care, J.D. Vance, because you don't. Just don't pretend like you're going to do anything about it because you won't. ...when overdose deaths at record numbers in our country or for the millions of children growing up without fathers in the home. We made the choice to destroy our communities. We let the Chinese do this. It was our elite's fault and only public <laughs> policy is going to fix that problem. Yeah. It has a lot nothing of other things out there. The way he they present globalization, they present it like it's some kind of crazy ass conspiracy theory by like, you know, the Chinese did this. No, they didn't. Americans did this. Americans did this starting in the 1970s when Richard Nixon went and formalized relations with China so that American businesses could benefit from cheap Chinese labor. And it got worse and worse throughout the 80s and 90s, each time that there was another trade deal or whatever with China. It got worse and worse and worse, and nobody did anything about it, especially conservatives, especially Republicans. And yeah, you know, Democrats didn't do much about it either. All right, I'm not letting them off the hook. Yeah, let's not pretend that the conservatives and the Republicans are the victims of this, because they fucking aren't. I think it's important to go after the human resources bureaucracy, of course. If you are actively teaching racism in American schools, in American corporations, if you're creating a hostile work environment because you have to tell everybody that they need to deconstruct their privilege or they need to sacrifice or repent of their whiteness, then you're committing what should be a violation of the law in this country and people should be able to sue you. We have used the human rights bureaucracy to enforce critical race theory on our corporate class. We could use it to enforce the opposite. Again, so like many conservatives, he has no idea what critical race theory is. So I've been a professional. I work in IT, actually. I'm not going to tell you where I work or what I do exactly. But I can tell you, for the last 20 years, literally no one has ever said what he just said. No one has ever come to me and said, oh, you need to check your privilege, anything like that. Nor have I ever seen a minority or a person of color get special treatment just because of the color of their skin. I have never seen especially minorities or people of color get hired just because they're minorities. No, that is not a thing. Not at the places I've worked. I don't know. Maybe at some other places. I've never experienced that. Okay. I mean, I know it's just you know anecdotal evidence or whatever, right? But I've never seen that. I've never seen somebody do shittier work and have that be ignored because they're a minority, because they're a black or because they're a woman, 
right? Actually, you know, I take it back. I've seen exactly one. I've seen one company that would hire a woman just because they're a woman. And that was back in the day. I used to be a game tester years and years and years ago as a game tester. That company actually, yes, they would hire someone just because they're a woman. You know why? Because they had like a room full of 300 sweaty guys. And so when like a woman applied for the job, it was hers instantly. <laughs> All right. But that's it. That's the only one. And that was definitely an outlier. Every sing every other company I've ever worked for. And, you know, I've worked for like five or six companies since then. Every single other one, it's always been merit-based. Every single one has been merit-based. And I know this because I used to hire people. I used to like run a team and shit. That was like my job. I got to hire people. And a couple of times... I remember people would come to me and be like, hey, hire this person because it's so-and-so's wife. And I'm like, okay, I don't give a fuck. Can she do the job? No, then she's not getting hired, <laughs> right? I remember that. I encountered that kind of nepotism in my like in my work. And, and never, never has there ever been one instance of somebody saying, you need to check your privilege or you didn't hire me because I'm like, you know, whatever. Because I'm not, because I'm a certain race or something like that. That's... It's not a thing that, I mean, I don't know. Does it happen out there? Do, do any, of you, any of you guys out there have personal stories that you can attest to where you see minorities getting special privilege, getting hired and stuff at greater rates, things like that? Maybe I've just never encountered it, all right? It's, it's like, uh, I don't know, but I, I suspect, I think, as far as my personal experience goes, that's a, that's a problem that just doesn't fucking exist. It's bullshit. It's bullshit that the conservatives are just making up. It has no fucking basis in reality. Moving on. We just have to be willing to use the power that's been given to us and go after these companies where it actually hurts. I'll say one final thing, and then I'll let all of you get out of here. Um, I'm a realist, but I'm also very hopeful about this country because we have a constitution, and we have a constitutional republic created by that constitution, and that gives the people that gives us the power to fight back against woke capital. Every time, and I get so annoyed at this, that I see congressional Republicans haul Google or Facebook or Amazon or whoever it is before their, um, before their committees, they whine at them, they complain at them, they criticize their practices, but we're so unwilling as a movement to actually do anything. It's not enough to, say, to tell Google, you're being bad. Clearly, they don't stop being bad. We have to punish them for being bad. If they're gonna keep on fighting against us, then we have to fight against them. That simple, we have to be willing to use the power granted to us by our constitutional republic. I'm reminded of one of my favorite quotes. It's an Abraham Lincoln quote from 1860. All right, I can't remember exactly what the problem, the shit that they had with Google. It had something to do with search results or whatever, but I know what he's referring to basically are companies like Facebook and at the time Twitter who would censor I guess not even really censor, but they would deplatform certain conservative influencers for saying racist things, saying transphobic things, saying Islamophobic stuff like that. That was a big deal. And remember, this is right shortly after uh, this video was filmed shortly after Donald Trump got deplatformed from Twitter. And that was a big deal in the Republican mindset at that time. All oh, the woke companies are, are restricting us, that kind of thing. Right. So that's what he's really talking about here. Oh, we need to fight back against companies such as Twitter that deplatform our influencers, i.e. companies that enforce their safety regulations, companies that enforce their terms in, of agreement where you are not allowed to harass people, where you're not allowed to spread racism and hate speech. That's what he's talking about. He wants to get rid of companies that prevent them from harassing other people. Those are the American values he's fucking talking about. Let's get rid of this asshole. There's only fucking three minutes left. I think you've seen enough here. But that's what this asshole is talking about. He wants to use the power of the Constitution in order to force his values upon everybody else. That's what he means when he says, oh, the Constitution allows us to fight back. Once again, who gets to determine what American values actually are? See, because, you know, what I think are American values, I'm pretty sure J.D. Vance doesn't agree with that. What do I think American values are? 
life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that means protection from people like who harass you because of the color of your skin, protections from corporations and companies who discriminate against you based on your set, your gender identity, based on your sexual orientation. That's what being an American actually means to me. Being able to say whatever the fuck you want, whenever the fuck you want, without the government stepping in and forcing you or penalizing you if you espouse certain ideals that somebody like J.D. Vance doesn't agree with. Keep that in mind. What he's actually saying is the most un-American shit ever. What he's actually saying, that the government should be able to decide which corporations live and which ones die depending on some arbitrary arbitrary judgment of their values, whether their values are American or not. That is the most unconstitutional fucking thing there is that flies right into the face of freedom of speech. Freedom of speech actually means the government is not allowed to dictate what your speech is. And that includes any values that your company or your corporation might support so if i go and i start a company let's say i start a let's say i start a comic book company right and if i publish comics that have a racially diverse cast does that mean that jd vance is now going to tax me at a higher rate if i like say have a, a dei program where we go out and try to recruit like say uh people of color to work at my corporation like say i want to find uh, an artist or a colorist or a letterist who's somebody of color. If I have a DEI program like that, does that mean that I get taxed at a higher rate? Does that mean that I don't get certain benefits that other people who own corporations do get? Does that mean that my corporation can't be incorporated anymore, according to fucking JD Vance, right? Do I get higher fucking penalties because of that, right? Let's say I have, a, uh, I have diversity training at my company so that my employees know that certain behavior racist or discriminatory behavior is not acceptable at work for example do i get penalized for that because i had the audacity to actually have my employees like take a training course so they can know like don't be fucking racist that's what he's talking about that is the very definition of the government coming in and dictating your speech so this shit's real, folks. If any of you out there were like kind of wondering who J.D. Vance was, because I did. I had no idea who the fuck this guy was. Well, there you go. Now you've seen it for yourself. Now you know how dangerous this fucking guy is. And if you think they're going to stop with corporate tax rates, you got another thing coming. Project 2025 is fucking real. If they're like brave enough to raise taxes on corporations that they don't agree with, you think that any of the other restrictions that they want to make based on your speech or your personal preferences, you think they're going to stop with any of those? Hell no, they're not. This, this election is fucking important. It's important. We cannot allow these people to take power. Right? They will turn this country into a dystopian, Christo-fascist hellhole. And J.D. Vance is one of the guys who will fucking do it. Anyway, I think that's all I got, folks. You guys, everybody stay cool, stay safe, and I will see you all next time. Adios. Hello, folks. If you like what I do and you want to support the channel, please consider buying something from my SD shop, supporting me on Patreon, liking and subscribing, and checking me out across my social media links listed below. Thank you all so much, and see you next time.